In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good morning, good people. I know, as I have said, to some it is morning, to others it is night, to others it is afternoon, but whatever time it is, wherever it is that you are in this world, please know that Father CK is greeting you and wishing you well and blessing you. I did promise after we concluded the Catholic Women Association series that I will be able to give the Catholic Men series. And the next one that is coming is for choir. And that will be for all choirs. I know that um, the material I gave for Catholic women, of course, applies even to other women in other uh, churches and even in other associations. So, today I'm going to, to start uh, a lengthy um, devotion on the outstanding characteristics of a Catholic man. A Catholic man. And uh, we call them CMA. Catholic Men Association. Now, here I want to be very categorical. When you talk about a Catholic man, I know there are those who are in the association itself, which is the ones who, are, um, who are, have been able to be registered. But as long as that you are a Catholic, you are a Catholic man. Of course, there are those who are in the association and they have got the regalia for the association. But I want to talk to all the men in that organization. I know there are those who have not joined. I'll also be talking to you. But I want to speak to those who have joined Catholic Men Association. Because there is a reason why the church would want you to be member of that association. In the Catholic Church, we have got associations. There is nobody who exists in a vacuum or somebody who is just hanging somewhere. So, when you see a Catholic man with a blue tie and a black or blue suit and a white shirt, what are the things that you would expect to see from him? What would be your expectation? Number one, and to me this is my best, because I have started with my best. A Catholic member, this Catholic man, must be a teacher of faith. And being a teacher of faith, it entails quite a number of things. This man is a spiritual mentor to his wife. A Catholic man who is a teacher of faith is actually a spiritual mentor to the wife. What does that mean? Remember, I didn't say a religious mentor. I talked about a spiritual mentor to the wife. Dear men, you are the leader in that family. And you, you mentor your wife spiritually. You are the one to guide her and will be able to see this. You, this presupposes then that there is no way that you are a Catholic, a member of the Catholic Men Association and you don't go to church. I know there are those men who will only appear when there are big celebrations. As, as a spiritual leader of the family, you are the one who is guiding the other family. In fact, we will call you a worship leader later. Another point in this, in this teacher of faith, is that as a husband and a dad for who you are, you are the theological protector of your family. You need to be concerned about what your family consumes theologically. Now, for those of you who are not married in the Catholic Church. I know I did elaborate this. We always call it 
very unfortunate situation. If you are a Catholic man and you are married from another uh, denomination, please take interest, keen interest on what your wife consumes in her church. When we were concluding the novena for married women praying for their husbands, I did say, maybe you can go back to, to YouTube and get that homily. I said that we have churches that are breaking families. It is so unfortunate to be in a family where you and your wife cannot go to the same church. I, I call it a living tragedy. If you did not be able to stop it from the beginning and you are there in between, I mean, not, not in the middle, but in the middle, please make sure that you, you are able to follow what your wife consumes in her church. Now, there are men, the wife is in a different church. He is a Catholic man. He has a daughter in another church, a son in another church, a daughter in another church. In fact, I, have, I, I know of a family that... Um, there is husband and wife and five children. Seven members of the family and all of them go to different churches. Now that is a family that can be described as a confederation of tribes religiously. You can imagine seven people, the same family. The husband is a Catholic. The wife for example, a full gospel. One daughter, PCA. The other daughter, uh, AIPCA dependent. The other daughter, full gospel. The other daughter, ACK. And the other daughter, Mukurino. Or the, the son or whoever. So you can imagine when they are discussing issues, it becomes so difficult. So please, as a man, be a theological protector. He is a sacramental inspirer. How can a Catholic man inspire us others sacramentally? Number one, by leaving his baptismal vows. And number two, by following and leaving his matrimonial vows. Very important. And number three, very important, following on the catechetical instruction of his children. You cannot tell us that you are a Catholic man, a member of the association, and you do not know which stage your son is in the catechism or your daughter. For you, baptisms in the family are just like breaking news. Because you don't follow, you don't even know. Very sad. And you are actually a religious and a spiritual mentor to the young people. What do I mean? We would want to see a man who inspires other men, young men, newly married, to join the Catholic Men Association. Because the way you live your marriage vows, the way you live your baptismal vows, becomes an attraction to others. It would be very sad that as a Catholic man, other young men would not want to join that association because they are asking, if this man belongs to the CMA, then there is no point of joining. So if you are one of them, now you have a duty for transformation because it is not the work of the parish priest to talk to the men to join the association. You may be having one of the most inspirational parish priests doing the best of the works, but the members are crooks, a bunch of thugs, men who cannot inspire anybody to join the faith. Very, very sad. Men who are fighting the church, men fighting themselves, men who are just, just lost souls. This man is a builder of associations. What does that mean? Dear Catholic men, please join small Christian communities. 
I know some of you are too big to be in a Jumuiya. Others are too busy to be in a Jumuiya. No, please. No, please. Be a member of a certain small Christian community and attend. You cannot be so busy and you want the same, same Jumuiya to attend to you when you have something. Remember, the structure of the Catholic Church is that you must be known in a certain small Christian community. If there is mass, it must be guided from there. So if you are a Catholic a man and your wife follows the Jumuiya and not you, a time comes that you need the church to serve you, but you've never been there. So you'll be telling us that, no, but my wife follows. No. You and your wife are two distinct persons, spiritually speaking. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a follower, you become also a family catechist. You guide the family biblically. Very, very important. You become a soldier. A soldier and a defender of the Catholic faith. It is so sad that we have Catholic men, just as we said in the Catholic women, we have Catholic men who actually are enemies within. These are the men who fight their church. These are the men who fight their priests. Dear Catholic men, as a teacher of faith, please remember you are also supposed to take care of your priests. Please, be concerned when you, are, when you see us not living a very good life. Don't be so happy to say that I was with Father CK at a certain place, which is not so desirable, and you are comfortable with that. You are comfortable. So you'd even be saying that, no, please protect us because we are also men. I know men can get lost in the midst of men. But please, don't just be, be active and so hyped when you are talking evil things about your priest. No. Be among those who pray for your priest and you guide us. Tell us that for the CK, that is not right what you are doing. I don't like that. I know we also have some of you in the Catholic Men Association who are writers of anonymous letters. We know you. You are the people who write those anonymous letters to bishops and superiors. A very mature Christian is the one who raises concern you raise concern in a way that you can defend it. If you love your church, you do not write an anonymous letter. Anonymous letters are written by hypocrites, number one. Number two, cowards. And number three, fools. Three types of people. So if you have ever been in a sitting where an anonymous letter was being written, you are a coward, you are a fool, and most importantly, you are just so evil. An imp. An imp is a small devil. That is what you are. That is very sad. So we can't do that. If you love your faith, you guide us. And that is very, very important. And then you'll be able to to run away from the seatings where the church is being maligned. This is our church. We are happy about the Catholic faith. Which, the, the faith that you profess. Please protect it. Be that teacher. The teacher of that faith. Please be. Thank you. I'll pick it tomorrow morning. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you and do have a productive Monday. Thank <laughs> you.